and then it led to the facial swelling. Uh, I had lips swell up after eating, sometimes around my eye, uh, my fingers, my toes were all getting swollen. And I, at that time, that was pretty scary because, you know, for some people that leads to uh, the, the breathing passage closing up. And I didn't know if that was going to happen to me. Uh, my name is Josh. I'm 30 years old and I'm from Saskatoon, Canada. Okay, and uh, your health uh, used to be quite different from today. What was your health issues when you were a kid? Um, yeah, it all started for me like shortly after birth once um, you know, I started having dairy. Um, that led to some big issues for me. Everything from I was having diaper rash as an infant and really bad oral thrush and the worst thing was ear infections that I was having, really painful ear infections. Um, so my mom had to take me to the doctor and get antibiotics for those ear infections. Um, and I believe those caused some issues for me. Um, the doctor recommended that my mom keep me on dairy even though I was showing some uh, signs of, of intolerance. So I kept eating dairy basically my whole life, not really realizing what it was doing to me. Um, you know, and it, 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 I was okay for the most part growing up, like I was still, you know, had a regular childhood and, and playing lots of sports and being active and that was fine but, you know, things were building up and I, I experienced pretty bad acne as a teenager and even into my 20s. And, um, yeah, so it, it really just all started, right, started uh, with there. that in, in childhood for me. Okay. Yeah. Then what happened next? So uh, with with um, the acne I, I had in uh, in my teenage years and even into my 20s in university, um, it wasn't super severe, but it was pretty bothersome to me. I had oily skin, dry skin, and acne, and was pretty insecure about it to the point where um, I ended up getting some antibiotics, some broad spectrum antibiotics for it. And that helped at the time, but I believe that caused some, some further digestive um, problems for me. Like it was so bad that, um, you know, even my university graduation photos at age 22 had to be photoshopped to um, wow. clear up the acne for my, my pictures. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, so I believe that around that time, um, as when I had the antibiotics, I was also under a lot of stress in university and probably not the best dietary and lifestyle choices. And um, a little while after that too, I took some, uh, had some vaccinations um, before traveling. And I feel like a combination of those things really led to more uh, health issues for me. Like, um, for example? Well, there was two really big things that kind of woke me up to realizing that I was, you know, really struggling and that things were piling up. And the first thing was that my hair started falling out. Um, I didn't go completely bald or anything. I have something called chronic telogen effluvium where um, a smaller percentage of your hair falls out and it falls out right from the roots. So um, as well, it was really like dry but also oily and just feeling like it was dead. Um, so yeah, I was diagnosed with that and, and that gave me a scare, you know, trying to figure that out only being like 22 years old. And it wasn't male pattern baldness, it was something different. And then um, the next thing, the, big, the biggest thing for me actually was um, a little later on I developed anaphylactic allergies um, to the point where I, you know, my face started swelling up. It, it started with just being itchy and then it led to hives where like on my, along my veins, on my arms and legs I started getting uh, itchy hives and then it led to the facial swelling. Uh, I had lips swell up after eating, sometimes around my eye, uh, my fingers, my toes were all getting swollen and I, at that time that was pretty scary because you know for some people that leads to um, the, the breathing passage closing up and I didn't know if that was going to happen to me and just before that I was about to travel to Asia so like my mom was really worried about me too and um, uh, yeah so that really um, gave me a scare and, and made me step back and, and start analyzing what am I eating, what's doing this, you know, right, what right. went wrong. So, so what did you change or do? Um, so with those allergies, it, it even took me a little while to figure out that it was food. At first I thought like, oh, maybe it's uh, the soap I'm using or whatever. But once I realized that it was food, I started uh, um, doing like elimination diets and trying to uh, track down uh, which foods were causing these and I did some allergy tests and just a lot of self-experimentation and that yeah that was a starting point for me for self-experimentation especially with diet and now that's become a regular thing for me where I'm always um, kind of experimenting to trigger, uh, figure out how I respond to different foods. Okay. So, so what did you do? Like what did you change? Well at, at first I was changing things kind of from a point of desperation where I would kind of try whatever someone recommended you know different diets like paleo or uh, eating for your blood type or whatever and, and nothing really seemed to 
work that well. It was just like, yeah, as I said, like desperation. Um, but ultimately, that led me to not just questioning what works for me, but what makes sense for humans to be eating, like what aligns with our human physiology and anatomy and, and what makes sense in nature. And um, kind of all that, that research and exploration and self-experimentation led me to uh, like a whole food plant-based, high carb, low fat type of diet with um, fruit being the, the basis of the diet. So eventually I started eating that way and uh, yeah, that's when I really started uh, seeing improvements in my health. Nice. So, so what would you like, eat for example <laughs> well I remember like besides the the hair loss problem and the anaphylactic allergies I was having uh, many different issues um, especially digestive issues um, like after eating I almost always uh, either had the, the allergy or I just had like a blood sugar spike or I had some gut pain to the point where I had to just like lay in bed in fetal position for like half an hour for that to go away or I would just need to sleep because of how bad the blood sugar spikes were. Um, even having like really bad um, tension in my jaw at a point so I just felt like um, everything I was eating was was harming me and I kind of like didn't even want to eat anymore because it's like why would I keep harming myself. Um, that got me uh, interested in fasting and I did some fasting and I felt better not eating than I did eating and um, eventually this was just a little over about two and a half years ago I was um, I remember I was helping uh, some family with some home renovations and I would bring my lunch and I was making some white rice with potatoes and squash and I would eat that for lunch so you know a high carb or a whole food plant-based type of meal and I remember like not feeling anything after eating which is how it should be but I, that was such a breakthrough for me because for uh, like so many years it was like I just felt terrible after eating so I was just like wow I can I can eat something and I, I can keep working in the afternoon without feeling like bloated or stomach pain or fatigue or an allergy or something so uh, yeah that kind of confirmed what I had researched in this you know more whole food plant-based high carb low fat um, type of thinking so it was uh, for me um, theory being backed by practice and that's uh, reinforced that type of eating for me Right. And I know you had a long list of other things you overcame. Yeah. Like, uh, can you tell me that? Sure. Yeah. For me, it was never anything super serious. Like I never, um, I never had cancer or anything like that. But it was like 70 symptoms from from head to toe, starting you know with with my hair issue, um, uh, the skin, the oily skin, acne prone skin, dry skin. I had uh, pretty bad uh, swollen lymph nodes here in the back of my neck. Uh, uh, congested a lot of times and getting colds. Um, my skin color was just not uh, like healthy. I, I, you know, quite a few people have mentioned to me in, in the last year or two that my complexion is much better. Um, even um, in my mouth, I had the bad like candida oral thrush, white tongue, uh, bad dental plaque, um, uh, internally like bad brain fog, and uh, feeling lethargic, losing interest in things I used to have an interest in. Uh, feeling like I was slurring words and, and being less comfortable in social settings to um, you know the rest of my body with like joint pain and itchiness and psoriasis and athlete's foot and um, yeah with the digestive uh, issues like bloating and discomfort and um, terribly like irregular bowel movements so really just That's head to toe nice. like like 75 things Wow yeah right so um, so like what diet did you continue to eat then and why yeah so um in the last two or three years i've stuck to that like whole food plant-based high carb low fat with with really the focus being a fruit like no matter where i am i travel a lot no matter where i am uh fruit is always like the basis of my diet starting the day with that especially like hydrating fruits or coconut water as well uh, so keeping the body hydrated and then and then trying to eat um um, yeah, just whole foods, uh, less processed stuff. Things that really make sense to me, like with the human anatomy and what we would find in nature. And to me, it's like fruit. Fruit, no matter which way I look at it, from like from the uh, environmental to the ethical to the symbiotic relationships, like fruit just makes the most sense for me. And, and so that's always the basis of my diet for the last um, two or three years now. How do you feel today? Um, I, I feel so much better than I did. Um, it's really hard to 
recognized with me though and I don't appreciate it enough because this all started for me like 2010, 2012 and got really bad like 2014. But I wish I could wake up tomorrow feeling like I felt in 2014 so that I could see like how bad I really felt at that time because it's been such a long uh, progression for me um, where I can't, I can't like, I didn't feel it so quickly. But when I look back even three years ago, four years ago and like remember the symptoms I had and how I felt, it's, it's a huge change and, and, and now it's where it used to be 60 or 70 symptoms, now I just have six or seven left that I'm uh, working at and uh, yeah, I don't feel that my, um, those symptoms I have left are really interfering with much of anything. I can go spend the whole day out like when I'm traveling and I feel good. And how is your energy and mood compared to before? Uh, it's, it's way more um, consistent and, and steady. Um, I've always been that type of person, but with the food responses, it was really bringing me down at times. And now it's pretty rare for me to have any kind of uh, food response. And I've gotten more into intermittent fasting as well. And I find that that helps uh, regulate everything for me. So yeah, I feel, uh, I feel better now at age 30 than I did at age 22, 23, 24 for sure. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. And what about um, like physical strength? Yeah, I've um, as far as physical strength, I know that's been maybe a concern with people. It's like, oh, you're not eating animal products anymore. You're not getting enough protein. But I, I, I don't believe that in, th in the research I've done. And in theory, it doesn't make sense to me. In a practice, it doesn't make sense to me either. I've I've been able to. Um, to go to the gym and work out and be able to add muscle and add strength like and I can notice it even week to week so as long as I'm eating enough and and training consistently consistently my, my strength is great and one thing I noticed actually around the time that I made the change from going from more of the standard American Canadian diet to um, to eating uh, when I committed to being a vegan is that I just had so much more uh, stamina like playing basketball I could just run and run and run even at age 28 whereas playing through my uh, late teenage years and early 20s I would get tired so easily so even though I wasn't in as good of shape in my late 20s I, I felt way more energy playing that was a, a big uh, uh, thing that I noticed nice any final words um, I, I think you know it, it it's so important just to become more mindful like if if people are struggling with things like me just really pay attention to what you're eating simplify maybe do journals and just track how your body uh, responds and, and listen to your body um, all this experimentation I've done has just made me become way more uh, in tune with what's going on and and I think that's super important awesome well thank you so much for sharing your story you're welcome if you would like to know more about how I got well naturally, you can go to my website and get more information. Here you can get a get started guide where I tell you all about the diet and lifestyle that I used. And uh, you can also download my top five tips totally free. Oh, and uh, don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this.